Hey BC, thanks for joining. Hope all is well. Um, I had mentioned uh, I was going into Manhattan uh, this past weekend, which I did, and went with a friend Jim, uh, Jim um, and we went to several stores, uh, did some videotaping of the stores, just showing you what they look like. Pretty, some, you know, pretty fast moving uh, footage. Um, also a bookstore. Um, there is one in Manhattan, which is just a great store. So I just wanted to let people uh, see what that looked like. And uh, I do get some music books from there and other books, of course. Uh, but I'm just going to start off before I go into it. Uh, and I do have one little uh, Twilight Zone story about uh, my Blue Note experience. Um, so I'll get to that in a little bit. But first wanted to talk about an al one album I got. Um, and then I'll show a few later. But this is a newer one. To me, anything above 2000, 2000 and up is new, <laughs> uh, believe it or not. But uh, uh, this is a band called the Black Angels. They're out of Austin, Texas. And uh, psych rock, uh, droning, very, very velvet underground influence. The lead singer has moments where he sounds like Jim Morrison um, just cool mixture of mel uh, melting pot of, of sounds and um, you're probably either gonna like it or not I put a link down below just so you could check out the sound uh, this album's called Passover from 2006 there's not much to it as far as the package um, you know it was about $25 and I uh, would, would have hoped at least a lyric sheet, but no, they didn't get that. Um, but very uh, cool music, from my sense, uh, of psychedelic sounds. And uh, Bloodhounds on My Trail, which is a great song. Uh, they talk about some war, Vietnam, and also some Iraq. So this is a really uh, neat record for my collection as far as newer psych music. Um, all right, so let's uh, get you on this tour and uh, we'll check it out and I'll see you in a bit.
so that's the uh, the tour. Uh, some cool record stores. I didn't buy much. Um, a lot of new records. Um, not much of uh, of uh, used. Uh, one store, the Academy, the last one uh, did have you know some used ones. But anyway, um, yeah. And when we got to the Academy, which was a, sort of our last stop. There was a guy that had piles of them, and uh, looks like we just missed the load because uh, he had jazz and rock ones. So uh, uh, I did buy one record, uh, two records. So in the jazz store, in fact, and the first one I bought was uh, Bootleg Him. This is a Alexis Corner. Those of you who don't know Alexis, please look him up. Uh, he is very very uh well known in england as far as the godfather for the blues who brought it into england and uh in the early 60s uh these were inserts from this album um this had, there was a lot there's a lot of write-up in this album of information i haven't even gone through it but there's a picture of the a young jagger uh playing which is really neat. Um, but uh, this album is uh, some live, some other studio things, but it has um, Charlie Watts played with him. Stones took him out of there. Uh, Jack Bruce, Ginger Baker, Robert Plant, Steve Miller, Cyril Davies. This is a pretty wild cover. Uh, this is from 72. And um, really impressed with the sounds and uh, the songs. It's like jazzy blues combination and uh, really cool album and I do have to get a few more Alexis Corner albums uh, and I guess the uh, reissues <laughs> um, the other album I bought was a Robin Hitchcock and the Egyptians the element of light and uh, this is like from the early 80s really good album from him again I've been collecting a lot of his uh, Winchester is just a great song um, uh, this the story I wanted to mention about uh, I'm not going to mention the store but um, uh, for the blue note didn't get any um, my friend Jim and I when we went back went into December we found this store that's a prominent uh, well I should I should say that it used to be a really well known store just CDs in there um, very very weak I, we have no idea what's going on. I think he's trying to sell the store, but really weird vibe when you go in there and there's three people, the owner and two workers. It's just, you would never mix and match these three people in this store ever. Um, I don't want to get into too much details about this or slander the store, but the experience we had was that this guy just basically didn't want to sell not because he wanted to keep his collection he just was not a business person um my friend offered uh this past weekend he says i have cash i have some good amount of money to spend here um basically when we went we were there in december the guys kept on saying he had boxes and boxes of records and you know yeah you can go through them and you know, this guy, I don't know, he didn't know anything about records, but we showed him the records when we went there uh, the first time. He had to look things up, but it, those two workers with him were looking things up on eBay. Yeah, this cost $600, and you know, well, what kind of condition is it? The first press is, you know, there was, there, that's how they were measuring everything. So you know what we're dealing with here. But he had these great, cool records so when we went in there uh saturday my friend said you know can i get that one up there i forgot which one it was and i uh, uh all right you know i'll have to go up and pull it meanwhile he's just complaining he's a you know by the store you know and then he started complaining uh you know i had a leak in the in this corner over here ruined all my rec you know these records that's why you know, I put some up on the wall, but anyway, long story short, he had a, this bin, and 
at a sign in front of it saying, you are retarded if you look at these records or buy these records. Of course, I got to go in and look at it. And Blue Notes and just cool. I mean, uh, there was a Mandrill album, not even opened. It was sealed. Uh, just some unbelievable records. Guy didn't know what he had. Uh, so we started saying, you know, we're interested in these. And it's like looking at us like, you know, so there's some boxes next to it and again these are things that he said got all wet and were no use so he looked in the box my friend started pulling out blue notes and just he goes oh my god look at this so i was pulling things out and we have this little stack and we say you know the guy got all disheveled you know we stepped over the boundary somehow here we wanted to give him money we wanted to you know, have a win-win situation, willing to pay the price. Um, he just couldn't handle the situation. Called my friend retarded, called me retarded. I mean, just verbally abusive. Uh, just did not know how to handle business. Was there a motive behind it, a reason it had to be? Uh, I guess you run into these characters, it's just very, very strange. We ran out of there, didn't want to give them a cent from that point on. Anyway, that was that story. Uh, there's probably more to it. I just don't want to go through it. Um, a few goodwills. Um, Glenn Campbell's real popular right now because he's sort of not doing well and people trying to get his records, including me. Um, uh, that's the greatest hits. Chet Atkins, uh, this is the golden guitar of Chet Atkins. This nice, pleasant uh, background music with his guitar work is wonderful. Uh, I am not a hipster. I always liked Bing Crosby. Uh, I have this on CD, so now I have it on the album. Um, some really fun songs from him. Um, that's about it. Uh, there is a, a show this Saturday in Bridgeport, Connecticut, anybody in the area. Um, and it's sponsored with a radio station and there's a big benefit and a lot of vendors are supposed to be there so i'm really excited to go there and get in there early um and that's about it thank you everyone for watching listening um and uh, looking forward for your videos please uh please show them um watching them and enjoying them and uh i'll talk to you real soon bye